Are we good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Yeah. Not a man or a beast, nothing on the land or underneath. Oh, nothing that could ever come between the love you have for me. I could lay my head in Sheol, I could make my bed at the bottom of the darkness deep oh but there is not a place i could escape you your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after coming after me There is not an angel of the stars There is not a devil in the dark Oh, nothing that could change the way you are The love you have for me I could lay my head in Sheol I could make my bed at the bottom of the darkness deep oh but there is not a place i could escape you your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after coming after me your heart your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after coming after me and i could lay my head in sheol i could make my bed at the bottom of the darkness deep oh but there is not a place could escape you your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after me your heart won't stop coming after coming after me Your heart won't stop coming after me. Your heart won't stop coming after me. Your heart won't stop coming after, coming after me. I see your face in every sunrise The colors of the morning are inside your eyes The world awakens in the light of the day I look up to the sky and say You're beautiful and the galaxies are bright we are amazed in the light of the stars it's all proclaiming who you are you're beautiful oh, 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 oh. 
The Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turned His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give 
Start over. <laughs> we just went through some praises. Uh, yeah, Emily got saved, and that's worth. Uh, that's why we're clapping. All right. So what else? What other what reasons are there to praise God tonight? Nothing. Silence. Bridget. Oh, okay. Awesome. Praise God for that, right? It's interesting. Uh, you know. Even coming here today, I, I wanted to talk about uh, starting out in praise. And uh, we're going to be in a passage in Micah 7. Uh, but I come in here today, and, and, I, and I see Mark down there, and I go down there, and I talk. And if I could characterize my tone in that, it would just be like really down in the dumps, probably. And not a whole lot of praise in my voice. Uh, we just sang this song about God's love, how deep the Father's love for us. I mean, man. It's like, how do we ever get to the point where we, we forget about God's love for us? You know, why, when we ask about praises, why is it so difficult? This isn't the first time we've done this. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been sitting there in that seat thinking, oh, gosh, I should have something. Yet yeah, we, could, we could come up with all types of requests, all types of needs, uh, you know, or we know those. What about the praises? And so uh, that's where we're going to be. We're going we're gonna to start out praising the Lord this, uh, this evening. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, we're in Micah, uh, chapter 7, and, and obviously we're not going to go through uh, the whole book. Um, uh, but Micah, like Isaiah, prophesied about the Assyrian destruction of the northern kingdom, uh, also about the later defeat of the southern kingdom by the Babylonians. Uh, but the main audience was that southern kingdom of Judah. And in this whole uh, book here, his prophecy, he communicated three messages uh, to show really that Judah was just as, Israel, uh, as guilty as Israel was. Um, and so the standard by which they were guilty was the law. Uh, they had transgressed it, and if they had kept it, they would receive blessing, but they disobeyed it. And, and so he prophesied that uh, they're going to be cast out of the promised land. Uh, man, that's, uh, that's a pretty scary thought, I think, if you're uh, Judah at the time. And so he's announcing to them that God was disciplining them, but it's interesting that even, even when he talks about discipline and God's discipline of them, think about this. This is a prophecy about you're going to be uh, wiped out by the Assyrians. You're going to be cast out of the land. But praise God that he, that he does this because he's disciplining you uh, like a good father would discipline you. And, and so uh, in, in chapter 7, first let's, let's just pray uh, to start off with before we get into the word. Uh, and then let's uh, just kind of walk through chapter 7 together. Sound good? Uh, Father, uh, Lord, we do praise you uh, tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray you just uh, teach us tonight, Lord, just to have hearts of praise. Uh, Lord, that when we're around each other, Lord, we just um, exude joy, not from circumstances or anything going on in life, uh, but Lord, uh, everything that you've done, uh, Lord, that's enough. Your love for us is enough. Um, and Lord, let us just uh, demonstrate that in our lives in our conversations, and Lord, certainly here tonight, even as we pray, Lord, we have burdens. Uh, Lord, we have concerns. Uh, Lord, we want to lift those to you, but uh, Father, I pray that um, you receive the praise that you're worthy of as well. And so, Father, help us just to have hearts of praise tonight uh, as we go through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
And so it's interesting because we're talking about uh, praise, but we're really, it starts off talking about a bemoaning of sin, uh, really the transgressions of the nation of Israel, uh, or, or actually Judah, in, in, in the first part of chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Uh, he says, Woe is me, for I uh, am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the grape gleanings of the vintage. And there is no cluster to eat. My soul despi- uh, desired the first dry, uh, fruit. The good man has perished out of the earth. And there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for reward. And the great man he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. The best of them is a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against the mother. <clears throat> the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the men of his own house. And, and so here Mike is uh, he's, he's, he's pleading with the Lord, uh, talking about the, the transgressions of the nation. And, and so, uh, but look at what he says in verses 7 through 13. He expresses his confidence in the Lord. He says, therefore, instead of those things, I will look into the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is thy, the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now she shall be trodden down as the mirror of the streets. And in, in the day that thy walls are to be built, and that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress, even to the river, from the sea to sea, and mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the uh, fruit of their uh, doings. And then in verse 14, he prays that God would shepherd his flock once again. Feed thy people with thy rod the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitary in wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead in the days of old. And then he talks about the Lord's promise. This is the Lord's promise to them to show these miraculous things to his people in verses 15 to 17. He says, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show you into marvelous things. The nations shall see, uh, see and be confounded at their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. And so you just, I was talking, when I was talking with Mark about this passage, and we're going to get into the good part, uh, 18 through 19, the, 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 the part that I wanted to really focus in on and that we want to get together and read in this first session of prayer. Uh, you know, and maybe you guys feel this way. Sometimes I feel like we live in a world that's so godless. And no, not many people are pursuing the Lord, and I was encouraged by him, man. That's why we find the faithful and we invest the word of God in the faithful. Uh, but sometimes that's, I'm sure that's how uh, he felt here. I mean, as he bemoans the, the sins, the transgressions of the nation. Uh, but what comforts him is the promises of God. And, and, and so he talks about it in verses 17 through 18. This is Micah's affirmation that, man, God is a unique God. He's the only God, right? And he says in verse 18, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. And just these verses right here affirm six things he pardons about God, uh, that he pardons the sin and transgression, that he doesn't stay angry forever, that he's a, he's a God of mercy, that he's going to again have compassion, that he would deal with Israel's sins by subduing them as if they were enemies. He's going to cast them into the sea, and that he's true and he's faithful to Jacob and he shows mercy to Abraham. And so here's the thing, and this is how we're going to uh, break out into our first uh, season of prayer Micah took comfort in the promises of God. 
uh, it, no matter what was going on around him, no matter the circumstances, no matter how many people ignored him, no matter what message he had, no matter if it seemed like he was the only one pursuing the Lord, he took comfort in the promises of God. And, and so, I, you know, I look at where's our comfort today? You know, there's so many reasons why we can praise the Lord today. No matter what's going on in our country, no matter what's going on in a pandemic, we've heard all these messages about the pandemic by now. But where's our comfort, really? And it's not so much about knowing where our comfort should be, but where is our comfort? And so let's praise God tonight, uh, because this was a comfort to Micah in these dark days. Uh, but, man, we, let's talk about the promises of God. Let's break out. And what are God's promises uh, to his people? What are we comforted by that God has promised us? And so let's uh, break out for about 20 minutes. Uh, I'll set a little timer here, and, and we'll come back together. Uh, but spend a moment just uh, looking at these verses again, uh, talking through them again, and, and praying these verses back to the Lord. But praise God uh, for who he is. Praise God. Remind him of his promises. Uh, and ask him <laughs> to give us faith, to, to, for that to be our comfort, to strengthen our faith uh, so that we can take comfort in those things. Sound good? All right. I'll call us back in 20 minutes here.
All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight, just knowing that we could have uh, comfort in you regardless of what's going on in our world. And and we see it every day. Um, I, I guess it, I don't know if it, we're going accustomed to it, but it, it appears probably everything is just getting uh, a downward spiral of um, um, godlessness. And, and Lord, I just pray that we would just uh, continue to find comfort in you and uh, just be a remnant of, of your heritage. And Lord, God, help us to, to be faithful like that, um, to be like you, and and just to recognize that that regardless of what's going on in this world, uh, our comfort is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I just pray that you continue to uh, uh, give us uh, uh, your protection and also your grace and your mercy, uh, which we see clearly in your word. Um, you know, you want to give mercy more than than anything else. And Lord, I just pray that we would just continue to uh, remain faithful and uh, keep us under shadow of your, your wings. In Jesus' name. Well, it is, um, you know, we're going to, this next season of prayer, we're going to uh, talk about some things that we want to be praying for. And it's interesting just even praying with Louis. Uh, actually prayed about this season because uh, there's some things on here that they can kind of get you down. Uh, you know, there, there's maybe sad stories or even maybe some frustrating things. And so even in this season, we want to remember uh, to ask God for uh, that change in perspective uh, so we can see how he's at work in these things uh, so that we can uh, praise him. So keep that in mind uh, as we read through these. Um, and so these are just a, a couple of things, and then we'll, we'll ask for uh, what else we need to pray for from you guys and what you guys know that are going on. But a few things to uh, keep before the Lord, uh, just the COVID numbers on the rise. Um, you know, I haven't paid much attention to those, uh, but I know they're on the rise. I know, uh, you know things are starting to change again. And so I know this time of year, is, is, uh, there's going to be a lot of sickness anyway, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of confusion of what's COVID, what's not COVID. Uh, so look, uh, regardless, we want to pray for uh, just a change of perspective on, okay, what can we learn in this time? But we want to pray for the Lord's grace and protection uh, for everyone. Um, another thing, the uh, continuing political climate in our country. Um, that's why I don't know the COVID numbers, because I finally just turned off the news. It's, just, it's like, man, it was just, uh, it got to the point where I was just frustrated watching it. And so... Uh, but we need to continue to play for, uh, pray for our country. Um, uh, we, we, we still have a freedom to come here, worship, and, and, and praise the Lord, and, and that's so important. And, and so, uh, we, we, you know, it, it may not seem like in a year or two that could be gone, but, you know, things could be set in motion now to where those, things, those, those freedoms could be gone at some point. You never know. And so we want to pray for our leaders in our country. Um, Natalie's sister, Heather, you guys saw on WhatsApp. Um, uh, she has cancer in her bones, uh, and so um, I know they're pretty upset about that. It was really sad because uh, our nephew was going to propose to his fiance that night. They found out, and so uh, they actually put that off until the next day. So yeah, that's a praise, and I know that brought a lot of uh, happiness in a difficult time. But uh, you know, this is this is the the sister-in-law that was part of leading me to the Lord. I know she's not afraid. Um, I know there's part of it this. It's, you know, it's difficult. I'm sure there's parts where she's very upset and sad, but I know that in the end that uh, she'll have the opportunity uh, to minister because of this. I know that. This is probably the most focused person I've ever seen in my life. She's intense. She scares me. All right? Uh, so just praying that the Lord will, will use her and her family um, and just, uh, you know, his will be done there. Um, Mark Trotter's bladder cancer. Uh, you guys have been praying for that as well, and, and so... Uh, I guess we found out some good news yesterday. They, they were concerned they might have to remove his bladder, uh, but the surgeon, they met with him yesterday, found out that the tumors have not gotten in, into the muscle layer, which means uh, they won't have to remove the bladder. Uh, so praise God for that. Um, so they're going to begin the BCG infusions. Uh, I knew a guy that went through this a couple years ago. They basically give you a tuberculosis, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's brutal. I remember him going through it and um, it was just a, it was, it was a very difficult process, so I know that we need to, I don't know Mark personally, uh, but even reading that, I remember what my friend went through, and it was, it was, it was rough. It took a toll on him, so they want to start that in about six weeks. Uh, so praise God that uh, he gets to keep his bladder, but pray for him and his family and, and even the church up there. I'm sure that's going to be uh, 
uh, a, a difficult time for them. So what else uh, should we be praying for? What other uh, uh, burdens uh, are you guys carrying or um, how else can we be praying today? So there's those at home. We want to pray for uh, Louis' friend at the Y, Daniel, uh, who was diagnosed with cancer, young guy. Um, just keep praying for him. Anything else? So Elizabeth, they met on the prayer walk, and they're having to rehome uh, the dog. And so that's tough for her, and, and we promised we'd pray for her, so we want to be faithful in that to pray for her and uh, just everybody involved there. All right, so <clears throat> just to make sure everybody getting home can hear Hal uh, in um, Tisha's neighborhood, uh, Heidi's neighborhood. Uh, everybody, it seems like everybody's neighborhood, you know, there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the hangout. Mallory's, Mallory's there, yeah. Um, so, um, but pray for Hal. I says he's a believer, but uh, thank the Lord we made those connections. You guys are making those connections, so uh, praise God for that. You gotta get a mic though. Okay. Because I gotta be able to hear you at home. Right? I was thinking that I could. Oh, this is my Oh, never mind. All this for nothing. I've been repeating <laughs> oh, these for nothing. Right. No, repeating, repeating. Yeah. I was really trying to be <laughs> conscious of the YouTube folks. Never mind.
does ask her what she believes about God and the Bible, and so we talked about her um, history, and um, she went to church with her mom when she was little, so that's not unusual, and um, so she kind of, she just said, like, I know it's the Lord's been, or God has been trying to um, get my attention, and so anyway, um, I got to share the gospel with her, and we exchanged numbers, and I up again maybe this week or next week and we can kind of talk about some of these steps and I was like yeah that'd be awesome and then I asked her I was like well I mean we can do this now if you are ready to take the baby but like we're not guaranteed that I'll see you tomorrow or you know that either one of us will make it out so like can we do this now if you're ready we can like talk about it so I just kind of took her through on this and um she yeah she just prayed and So she was saved at Journeys, and now she's on her spiritual journey. Come on, I I couldn't be the first one that thought of something like that, right? So we were praying for her and for her mom. So she was just telling me, she's like, I'm so excited, I'm going to go home. Like, she's telling her mom, she's going to be so excited about it. So, um, yeah, we're praying for her mom. I'm not sure if she's saved or not. I would assume she's saved. So break up again. Uh, we'll we'll take about fifteen minutes here, uh, and uh, let's just pray for those things. And man, let's just I, mean, I don't know. I'm you know, I'm kind of get convicted when I hear Heidi talk about that. And I mean, I'm gonna be praying, and you know, I would be thinking those things in that way, and seeing every opportunity, not missing those opportunities. So uh, thanks for you know being that example. And so.
Praise God. And we're glad you're here. You're a blessing to all of us. So, And, uh, you know, we'll definitely pray for those opportunities. And that's awesome that you're excited to go up there and be with them. And that's what we need. We need that change of perspective in all things sometimes. And, and so it's cool to see how God shows us and grows us in those difficult times. So uh, let's always be thankful for those things. And try to see how he's working in those times. It's hard to see sometimes, but we, we want to be able to see him. So, well, let's pray. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We had another prayer walk on Saturday. Uh-huh. Prayer was hard, and, and there's a guy that was wearing a Kansas City hat, and so we just went to Kansas City. So, pray for Mike. And so, I know there's a lot of prayer walks and a lot of individuals that we can be praying for. So, we all just prayer walk some. Uh, with the prayer will park. Last call. Alrighty, well, uh, let's take some time here and just pray. Um, there's a lot of things to be praying for, and so we'll uh, we'll come back. We want got a couple more things we want to keep before us, uh, really church things, but we'll get to that. So let's pray for this now, and then we'll get back at it.